Hi, I'm Anna Disclaim, a lecturer here in Poimland Music School. I'm also a native specialist and an Ableton certified trainer. Today I'm going to show you how to make a quick sketch with Machina Plus in standalone mode and with hardware integration. There's loads of cool stuff to show you, so let's get started. If we take the first look, we can see the Machina Plus looks pretty much like the Machina Mark III controller. The biggest difference is that it's standalone. However, it can still be used as a controller as well and hooked up to a computer. Inside this unit, there is four gigabytes of RAM, a quad-core processor, 32 gigabytes of flash drive, and terabytes of SD card, but it's only coming with a 60 gigabyte SD card. And I audio interfaces are only integratable right now, not any third party. Wi-Fi connection only needed for the registration and the downloading libraries, so you can actually use the encoder to type in the password. So the housing of it is much more strode and the encoders are metal and of course we got still a really nice 4D encoder here. But what really is new here is the USB socket. So currently the miniature and the GP8 are hooked up via the USBs so they're receiving MIDI via them. However there is also MIDI in and out, so we could connect another external device through the MIDI's. We got the line ins, we got the mic ins, so we can hook up there a dynamic microphone, the gain input for that, the main line outs, which are correctly connected to the speakers, and then the main volume control for both the line outs and for the headphones as well. Why do we have that USB there? Because currently there is no computer around us, but that's what we can use to hook up the machine as a controller in controller mode or in storage mode so we can get access to the libraries and also we can transfer files. So first thing first, we're gonna sequence some core progressions. I'm gonna hit the browser, go to instruments and choose Massive. And from Massive, I'm also going to choose an expansion pack. Once I have that, we can just specify what kind of sound we're looking for. So I'm going for a synth pad, and now I can choose my preset. And once I'm happy, I'm gonna load that. If I go to pad mode here, I'm able to trigger the root note of the instrument. If I go to keyboard mode, now here I'm able to trigger different pitches. What I'm also able to do here is specify what scale I want to play in. So I'm gonna set this to minor. But because I want chords, I'm gonna go to chords mode and straight away I've got some triads here. But there's something cooler here, which are the chord sets. And if I choose that, I've got eight different groups of major and minor chords. The higher the number of the groups, the more complex the chords are. So I'm gonna go with minor four, and then I have these chords here. So once I've got that, I am going to set my tempo to 110 and also I'm going to put up the metronome and we are ready to record. Excellent, I've got my chord progressions. So now I'm gonna go and sequence some drums. So we're gonna create a new group, then go back to the browser, search for a group of sounds. And again, I'm going to specify what expansion packs I wanna search in and then choose my kit. Once I'm happy, I'm gonna hit load. If I go to pad mode, now I'm able to trigger each different drum hits here. So shift record to get a count in and then get started with recording. I'm gonna go to patterns and then hit duplicate. So I'll be able to add more elements to the duplicated pattern. I'm also gonna go to the mixer and just adjust volume then go back to pad mode and add some more trim hits so 
So now I've got that as well, I'm going to take off the metronome and also I'm going to duplicate this pattern again and add in a third element but now I'm going to use the step sequencer. So once I chose the sound, you can enter step mode and then just brush the notes in. I'm also going to adjust the volume of the shaker. I'm going to go and duplicate the pattern again and keep adding other elements. I'm going to duplicate the pattern and add some repeated notes in. I'm going to put on note repeat. Change the rate at the end. Also going to adjust the volume for the hats. I'm also going to apply some swing to the hi-hats. I'm also going to apply some swing to the whole group. And record a few more elements here. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to sidechain the chords to the kick drum. So I'm going to select the chords and then hit shift and plug in, go to sound level and hit the plus sign and then insert the compressor. And once I have that, I can select the input source, which are my kicks. So now we got there, we're going to record some bass line from my Moog. To do that, we need to create a new group and then go to settings so we can confirm the MIDI routing. So I need to make sure that the output devices are enabled. So I'm going to use the boutique also. So the boutique output is enabled. Let's check the Moog as well. That's also enabled. So let's go back to my sound, go to channel where I can set the destination to the MIDI notes. So I'm going to choose the Moog and that means now I'm hitting keyboard mode, we can see that there is MIDI being sent to the Moog. Um, in order for us to hear, I'm actually going to resample it back into machine. We're going to go to input source, go to external mono and then choose my appropriate input. I'm going to put on the monitoring. So now we can hear what the Moog does. So first I'm going to record the MIDI notes and then once that's inside Machina, then I'm going to tweak the synth and sample it back as audio. So now I'm going to record this back into the sampler. So I'm going to hit start. So it's waiting for the signal to play back. So let's go. take off monitoring now and we got the baseline in. 
So what we're going to do now, we're going to filter out some of the low ends from the chords so the bass can cut through a little better. So I'm going to mute the drums and then head to my chords and add a filter. Set it to high pass. So now the bass now got a bit more space. Just set the volume a bit. Great, now we're going to sample the Jupiter, the JP8 back as well. We're going to create a new group and for this time I'm going to go to channel and make sure that on the sound level my MIDI destination is the Butik. I'm going to go to the sampler, put monitoring on and then choose the appropriate input. And we got the signal. going to make sure the JP8 is set to solo mode, not poly. Let's go. So the notes are now in, we're going to start putting it back into the machine. I'm going to take off monitoring. Okay, effect time. bit of free verb. So now we're going to load in some vocals and then record some harmonies. Increase the pattern length. Now we're going to head to sampling, record, put the monitoring on, and then make sure that we still on loop and the sound, the target is sound. You don't know what it feels like to be left here alone. I don't care your excuses that you have. You don't know what it feels like to be left here alone. I don't care. Let's put some effects on.
Okay, so now we're going to come up with some vocal chops in the sampler. So with the slice mode, we're going to go with manual so I can punch the slices in. You don't know what it feels like to be left here alone. I don't care your excuses that you have. Here left alone, alone what I might be to, to have. So now we're going to apply these slices to a new group. You can delete the one that I used for slicing. And now every single slice leaves on its own pad. So we're going to select them all at once so I can put them into the same jaw group so they never overlap. So let's just see if we can come up with something. Let's put some effects on. the filter so we can automate it. So we're going to take a look at the new update which are clips. We can actually move clips freely around. So now if I hit clip and if I decide that I want these vocals to go to scene free, now I can just actually hit the position and then move it across the timeline, which is brilliant. So what we're going to do, we're going to take drums out a bar earlier. So I'm going to just trim it back by one bar. And we're also going to take out the chords a little earlier, but I want to have not an entire bar. So if we hold down shift, then we can do some final adjustments. So let's leave it there. And we can have a listen now. I enjoyed a lot working with the Machina Plus and actually not have a computer hooking up all my external instruments, being able to do everything pretty much that I usually would do with my Machina Mark III controller. It's a really good tool for live performance, really reliable and flexible. If you're interested in our courses or the Machina Plus, please check the description below.
and thanks for watching.